that we have planned a great celebration for you this morning. One that we hope you will engage in, become educated in, and as well become empowered. We also want to acknowledge any men and women who are here today who have served in any of our armed forces. Thank you for your service and for keeping us safe. And for ensuring that we have individual freedoms and rights, none more important than the right to vote. Each year during the month of February, our country takes time to reflect and to celebrate the many contributions that African Americans have made for the success of this great nation. Amen. Our theme this year recognizes the struggles for voting rights for both black men and women throughout American history and focuses on the countless African Americans, past and present, who have suffered and sacrificed to secure the right to vote. The impact of the selfless service helped to shape American history dating back to the Civil War and before. In 1870, the 15th Amendment provided that the right to vote should, be, should not be denied or abridged on the base of color, race, or previous condition of service. When we think of African-American voting rights, one word should come to mind, remembrance. Following the conclusion of the Civil War, black individuals attempting to vote in the southern states encountered numerous unfair obstacles to gaining voting rights. One of the barriers was the literacy test. The purpose of the literacy test was to exclude persons with basic literacy. In particular, poor African Americans in the South from voting. We'd like to introduce you to some African Americans who face challenges post reconstruction as they try to vote or help others vote. Listen to their accounts of the obstacles they encountered as Southern states enacted laws to limit the voting rights of African Americans. Meet Hollis James. Hollis could not read or write. He was told that he had to pass a literacy test in order to vote. Hello. Hello. My name is Harley Gaines. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just a poor old farmer. I can't read nor write. I sure won't vote. Voting is my right. That's right. right. That's right. But they tell me they got a test. A pretty hard old test. Yes. Mm -hmm. For a black folk and white folk. They call it liquid. Liquid tea. Yes, yes. Yeah. They get them with a whole lot of paper with mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Holly. Holly can't, can't do that, that tea. Yes. I heard that the pastor read it very slim when it comes to pastor. Black people, so happy home. I never, never forget. Mm. Never forget the price that your ancestors have paid. Amen. 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 Meet Susan Jackson. Susan was a member of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Susan's job was to help prepare African Americans who wanted to register to vote. 
pass the literacy test. I am Susan Jackson. Educated, yet I was tasked with the most difficult of tasks to teach people how to pass a literacy test. Required for voting. It was an extremely challenging test. Even I couldn't pass it. And it was in every southern state. These tests were designed so that no applicant would ever pass. The Louisiana literacy test had nothing to do with citizenship. It was intended to put the applicant through mental anguish and shame. The questions on the test, as I was reading it, was confusingly written and worded. And some of the questions seemed unanswerable. They were that way intentionally. And after all, the judge of whether the answers were correct was the register. And in all cases, the register was right. One of the items I had tried to tutor some potential voters read like this. Write every other word in this first line and print the third word in the same line, but capitalize the fifth word that you wrote. I just can't see how I can get anybody who wanted to vote to pass this test. Never forget the price our ancestors paid. Many black individuals were unable to afford property due to systemic racism and economic equality, making it impossible for them to meet the property ownership requirement for voting. Meet Sandra Tepps. Hello, I'm Sandra Tepps. I'm Sandra Tepps. I'm the daughter of Sandra Tepps. I was told that I had to own property before I could vote. It didn't matter if I was a citizen of this country or I lived in the state. I had a job working in the factory and my husband worked in the same factory too. But every time we were applied for a loan for a home, we were always turned down. <clears throat> Paid our bills on time and that didn't matter. But they said we didn't make enough money to have a loan for a home. But guess what? All the black people that we knew, they didn't own property either. And they couldn't vote. Never forget the price our ancestors paid. Amen. Voting was a lifelong dream for many older African Americans in the South. Robert Jones worked on a voter registration project in Baton Rouge in 1962. He remembers an elderly lady by the name of Mrs. Williams whom he took to register to vote. It was her third attempt to register. Robert took a gun with him under his coat for protection. He always told everyone that he was prepared to shoot somebody if they had decided to go too far. Fortunately for him and Mrs. Williams, it didn't go that far. My name is Amanda Williams. I am 84 years old. I thought that I would never see the day that I would vote. I did it, y'all. I did it. My parents were slaves. They went through a lot so that I could be free. And I did something 
that they never got the chance to do. I bought it. Never forget the price our ancestors paid. Never forget. Many African Americans who attempted to vote were also threatened physically or feared losing their jobs. One of the major goals of the Civil Rights Movement was to register voters across the South. In order for African Americans to gain political power, most of the Africans in the Civil Rights History Project were involved in voter registration drives, driving voters to the polls, teaching literacy classes for the purposes of voter registration, or encouraging local African Americans to run as candidates. Meet Jimmy Smith. My name is Jimmy Smith. As an African American, I became a voting activist so that African Americans could obtain political power in our democracy. I promoted voting rights. I organized voting registration drives. I was involved in voter education. Every bit of my time after work was spent to help protect and expand the access to the voting process. Well, wouldn't you know I encountered a multitude of retaliatory actions. And you know what happened? I was fired from my job as a school teacher. Mm -hmm. A local minister in my hometown had been shot and killed for registering voters. Mm -hmm. My father was a day laborer. But he was also actively involved in registering African Americans to vote. Teaching voter registration classes, all of this before I got involved. He got fired from his job after being there over 20 years. They made it so hard for him, he was never able to get another job in the state where we lived. Every activist in our state was being investigated. There was always a network of informants telling political powers what we were doing as activists. We always faced economic consequences and intimidation tactics were consistent present. Never forget the price our ancestors paid. Amen. Intimidation was used through various means to deter African Americans from registering to vote. There were threats of violence, harassment, economic reprisals, such as job loss or eviction, physical violence, and social ostracism. Groups like the Ku Klux Klan instill fear through acts of terrorism, creating a hostile environment that discouraged African Americans from exercising their right to vote. Meet Annie Jones. My name is Annie Jones. I remember when I tried to vote in Mississippi in 1964. The local clerk, clerk tried to intimidate me by using police dogs. And then he said, what are you doing? Why are you here, Annie? Then he tells me, I knew your grandparents, and I've known every person in your family. What are you doing here, Annie? What are you doing here anyway? And so I told him I wanted to vote. Then he said to me, you go home. You do just like your mama and your grandmama did. Go home. Voting ain't for black folks. 
That's what he said. The court wouldn't even approve my test. I had to wait till the Voting Rights Act was passed the next year. That's just plain ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Never forget the price our ancestors paid. Voter suppression continues to be a concern for African Americans and other marginalized communities in various forms. Efforts to combat these suppressive measures and protect voting rights remain ongoing. Thank you. This concludes our Black History Celebration. We thank you for being a part of each and every segment that you had an opportunity to hear. All right. We pray that something you heard on today cause a change. Amen. That if you're not a voter, that you register. If you know someone, you encourage. Amen. And if someone needs help, that you help them. Poll taxes, literacy tests, fraud, and intimidation limited the right to vote for African Americans in this country. It took marches and nationwide protests to eventually create the 24th Amendment, which abolished poll taxes and voting rights, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which protected African Americans' right to vote. You know there were many times that people prayed Right. All the sit-ins sit -ins were peaceable. There was no fighting. There was silence. And people were always in the background praying. May we never forget the discriminating practices that were used to deny African Americans voting rights, especially in the South. May we never forget the price our ancestors paid so that we could vote. It's your vote, it's your voice, it's your responsibility.